I'm not in the mind of Artie Shaw who said that I wish that Glenn Miller had lived and his music had died. <laughs> because so many of you watch from the States, I thought I'd come down and film these flags. This is the Mall in London. Down there is Buckingham Palace. Everyone's getting ready for Donald coming tomorrow. We'll see how much we get of him on the vlog. It depends on security and everything else like that and all the other things I'm gonna to do tomorrow. But anyway, it's Sunday today. It's the day before, so everyone's still setting up. Gorgeously warm day, and uh, there you go. We'll drive down here tomorrow. He's not gonna get the carriage, horse and carriage though, apparently. So 30 minutes later, I still haven't got further than a mile from work. Um, thanks, Donald. To be fair, it's not just Donald, it'd be any US president was here. The, road, the traffic situation just gets insane. There are roads closed already, uh, diversions in place. It's June, which means there's an awful lot more people in London than there was even just two weeks ago. Things just start to get a little crazy, which is in why- 1,000 feet. Turn right onto A3211, Upper Thames Street. Which is why a lot of people, well, I particularly try and avoid coming in. So it's Tuesday. I couldn't really get you any more than what I got yesterday as I was setting that camera up, hoping to take a photograph of uh, the beast, I mean the car, not Trump, uh, as it went past our building for social media. Uh, I got stopped by the police. They cleared the whole area. Not one person was allowed within like a square mile of where Trump was. It was ridiculous in terms of unless they were a dignitary. So my boss got to meet him. Uh, I don't know what they said, um, but uh, yeah, it was kind of weird. I got a couple of photos, as you can see, on my Instagram with my nice long-range lens from a window overlooking uh, from our building. Thankfully, I didn't get picked up by a sniper, which would have been rather interesting. But yeah, it was quite, quite weird, really. So anyway, I'm out in a field uh, about half a mile away from our house. Well, and what we have in England, we have these wonderful things called public rights of way. Uh, this is a public footpath, so it's always open. It's always an ancient right of way uh, for people to walk on. And it's uh, directly onto the runway of Duxford. One of my neighbours told me about it before, but I've never bothered to actually come and seek it out. And then since I got myself an ordnance survey map, I've come down. So there is a parachute drop by, I think, 200 people uh, simulating what happened exactly 75 years ago, tomorrow night, the 5th of June. And as I've mentioned already, in the vlog i'm going to be out in france uh, on the 27th of june i'm doing a series of visits uh, hopefully one to the selma factory as well but i'm also retracing the steps of my grandpa uh, who was who went into d-day exactly 75 years before it would have been great to have been there 
this week but you're not going to get anywhere near the sites because of what's going on with uh, with Trump and Macron and everybody else is going to be there so uh, it's quite interesting to be able to go and also to be there 75 years after Grandpa went and a little bit you know unlike the other three videos I've made on the First World War which you can watch up here um, you know these aren't ancient figures to me this is my grandpa he only died seven or eight years ago um, I knew him really well and uh, so that kind of makes a change in history and it's only sort of 25 years later obviously after those other videos that I've made and it, you know it really brings it to life um, how things go so we're just waiting for the uh, air show it's, like it's weird having an air show on a Tuesday and Wednesday I won't, I'll hopefully get some of the Dakotas because the Dakotas are going to form up tomorrow but I'll probably have to do that from my garden and we'll have time to come down here we've even got the authentic D-Day weather hmm. <laughs> So it's Wednesday, it's the 5th of June, it should have been the 75th anniversary of D-Day today but of course if you know the story you'll know that uh, the weather forecasters told uh, Eisenhower he had to wait a day, uh, they found this window where they could go on the 6th of June so despite what everything's going on on Twitter at the moment everyone talking about their granddad being on the beach 75 years ago today, um, he, good job he wasn't on the beach 75 years ago today because he would have been on his own. Parachute jump yesterday didn't happen because of a little bit of rain uh, which was kind of you know kind of tied in ironically with kind of what happened 75 years ago, it was a lot worse weather which was why D-Day was delayed a day. But let's get on to Glenn Miller, because that's kind of probably why most of you are here, and most of you have skipped over all the stuff all the stuff I've just done. Now, I first became aware of Glenn Miller's music in my early teens, playing in the big bands, you know, I'm to play in the mood and all that sort of caper. Moonlight Serenade still leaves me with, uh, you know, nightmares and its real version is not too bad but when a load of student players are trying to play it, especially student clarinet players who tend to play very very sharp and out of tune saxophones oh yeah it's it's quite harsh isn't it but why are you talking about Glenn Miller Dan it's not jazz well you know what Glenn Miller actually said that he said he didn't want to form a jazz band I'm not in the mind of Artie Shaw he said that I wish that Glenn Miller had lived and his music had died or is it just chatting in a choo-choo had died probably because it's difficult to say but um there's no doubt the guy's kind of musical credentials he recorded with the likes of Benny Goodman Coleman Hawkins he was at the Tommy Dorsey Orchestra for a while uh, he also had a recording session with Gene Krupa you know so there's kind of there's some pretty good credentials there for this guy um yes as kind of like I, I was using the analogy i was thinking the analogy this morning when i was thinking about what i was going to say to you of what we often do with saxophone players with kenny g in that nobody's ever really said i was listening to john coltrane and sonny rollins but now all i listen to is kenny g whereas lots and lots of people have said i started listening to kenny g and now i listen to coltrane rollins marsalis chris potter etc etc um same thing with Glenn Miller, a lot of people, including me, it was a gateway in. You started listening to the likes of Glenn Miller, and then you found out about Duke Ellington, Gene Kruber, Count Basie, Benny Goodman, uh, and, you know, three of those Miller worked with as well. So don't be too keen to dismiss it out of hand as like a, a jazz snob, as it were. Um, there's some good music in there. You know, just because it's popular doesn't necessarily always mean it's really bad music. Yes. I agree, most, most if not all of Glenn Miller's music is not a patch on, say, G. Ellington's music or Count Basie's music, and I personally, now, would rather listen to Count Basie, especially with Lester Young. So I've put you a playlist together, that's the main thing of today. Um, it's not, kind of, I'm not full of knowledge of this era, really, of jazz, I've kind of done a bit of research, I've put something there, just go and enjoy it, maybe use it as a nostalgia tool, uh, thinking about probably parents or grandparents that you knew that kind of were over here in Europe during the war, or maybe, obviously, if you're British, were here. You know, for me, the great thing about the Glenn Miller's music, I remember being in... I think I would have been, like, the final year of primary school in the UK, so I'm 10. 11, nearly the same age as my daughter is now, and uh, my grandpa taking me to a, a concert of the Sixth Form Big Band, which was 17, 18 year olds, uh, and me just asking him questions about Glenn Miller, and because that was a kind of connection that me and him could have across the generations at that age, because I was learning to play the saxophone. It was the time when the saxophone was definitely the popular music. I mean, you've got to remember, at that time, kind of just before, during and after the war, almost every town in England had at least two dance halls, which would have needed a dance band. And most of these dance bands were minimum nine, ten piece, and most of them would hopefully have 16 to 18 piece bands. Um, you know, think of all the musicians earning employment from that. And I remember I was talking to my mum a while ago about this and she was talking about her mum, my grandma, who I 
always feel I never really knew because she passed away when I was just nine. Um, but I remember my mum saying a story from her mum, which was, you know, the war, if it wasn't for the fact that people were getting killed, the war was a, a really good time. It was probably the best time of her life. You know, they got to travel, they got to meet lots of new people. She met my grandfather through that. Sadly, she also lost her fiance before she met my grandfather, uh, who was a Battle of Britain pilot. And, you know, there's kind of this great mix up of the country that, that happened then. So there is a nostalgic look back. There's also a. And, and hopefully understanding, you know, if you're not sure and if you're into film and movies, go and watch tonight, go and watch the f second episode of Band of Brothers and then watch Saving Private Ryan, just the opening 25 minutes tomorrow. It wasn't glamorous, it was gory, it was horrible. I'm rereading Anthony Beaver's excellent book on D-Day at the moment, well, the whole Battle of Normandy as I prepare to go out there at the end of the month. Um, but there you go. I hope that kind of is, I don't know whether that makes any sense or not, but uh, I just wanted to make a vlog on that side and, you know, tell me your memories and maybe your parents or your grandparents, maybe even your grand great-grandparents memories uh, of that time that you've heard of that music and it's always good isn't it the music of our teens and 20s always takes us back to that place where we were at that point and you know you can understand for that generation why it's there but sadly you know this probably I mean we said it at the 70th but this is almost certainly the last commemoration where we'll actually have living veterans there because most are now well into the 90s so thank you very much for watching this is my last vlog here this is what I was up to this time of year last year and don't forget to hit that subscribe button see you soon bye bye